Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about geometric uh, represent, uh, representation of vectors and also add in some other concepts around vectors. All right, so vectors, we're going to talk about terms and definitions. So a vector has two quantities or two dimensions uh, that we want to discuss. The first is the direction of the vector and the second <clears throat> is the magnitude. Uh, typically, vectors uh, are indicated by a lowercase letter. I've indicated this with a lowercase letter a. Uh, the tip of the arrow defines the direction of the vector, and then the length of the vector defines the magnitude. All right, so let's talk about uh, direction. Direction is identified in what we'll call, let's say, coordinate form, or what you're used to in coordinate form, and it tells you uh, what direction in both an xy plane the coordinate is moving. So this would be plus 4 in the x direction, plus 1 in the y direction. And that would be the direction of the vector. The magnitude is the length of the vector, and we can use what we know about uh, the distance formula in the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the magnitude of the vector is. And typically, magnitude of the vector is identified by the lowercase a, or the initial for the vector, in an absolute value symbol bracket. So ultimately, you're going to get a magnitude, which is some positive value. Uh, and so that's why they put it in uh, absolute value brackets. So what you'll do is use the distance formula, uh, and essentially it's from a point zero zero to four one. But you can move this vector in uh, to different locations, and the direction, <clears throat> meaning I could move this off of the origin uh, in an x y plane, it would still have a direction of four one. So four squared or four minus zero squared plus one. Uh, minus 0 squared is equal to seven, uh, 17. Take the square root of 17 and that's your magnitude. All right, so the direction of the vector uh, is represented by this xy movement, 4 plus 4 plus 1, and the magnitude of the vector, which is just the length of the vector uh, viewed uh, geometrically, is the distance from uh, the point at the end, the end point of the ray, to the tip of this particular ray. Right, so vectors can be added, subtracted, multiplied, and divided, and that's what we're going to talk about now. Uh, examples of uh, vectors would be the velocity of Mr. Otten running the cafeteria from the A building, an effort to get to the salad bar before the lunch bell, uh, or the wind blowing from the Santa Cruz Mountains to San Jose. All right, so <clears throat> adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, uh, vectors can be added together to form a new ray or vector called a vector sum. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take the vectors and adding, uh, add them by linking the two vectors together. And I'm going to give you a quick visual here. So I take one vector, A, and then I add B, and I'm linking them by taking uh, the end point of one and connecting it to the tip of the other, and then drawing a new vector, which is A plus B, uh, otherwise known as the vector sum. All right, so going back to our uh, discussion about some of the definitions of addition. Uh, so the starting point is the non-tip side of the origin vector, uh, which in this case was the blue vector. The tip of the origin vector links up with the non-tip side of the added vector, which is in this case the black vector or B. <clears throat> uh, the tip of the added vector is the endpoint of the summed vectors, which is the vector sum. And I'm going to create the vector sum by creating a link uh, from the origin of the first vector to the endpoint of the added vector. And that vector sum is represented in red from A directly to C. Uh, all right, so the vector sum now has its own direction and magnitude, which uh, can be and most likely will be different than uh, the sum of the two vectors, uh, which in this case would be A plus B. All right, so to give you more of a visual description, I have uh, there are different ways I can write the sum of the vectors A, B, plus ray BC is equal to ray AC, or vector AC. <clears throat> I could also write this if A is 2, 3, so here's my directional component, B is 4, 2, A plus B <clears throat> is just equal to A plus B. Uh, so A plus B or AC would be my vector. Now, uh, getting into the addition piece of vectors, A plus B is represented by adding the X values together, and then adding the y values together independently. So 2 plus 4, uh, comma 3 plus 2 gives me my new vector uh, direction of the vector, 6, 5. And the magnitude is going to be different as well. 6 squared plus 5 squared 
So you go to 36 uh, plus 25 or the square root of 61. So origin vector uh, with the added vector creates the vector sum represented as a plus b or a b plus b c is equal to a c. <clears throat> the added vectors, you're just adding the x values and the y values separately. Magnitude now uh, is going to be the added vectors taking the length of this vector sum. And you can see the direction of each is going to be different. Uh, so a, b, and a, c are all different directions uh, and different magnitudes, uh, which doesn't always have to be the same, although the I guess you could say the vector sum is going to have to have a different magnitude if you're adding two of the values together. Okay, uh, so vector subtraction involves, we're going to move on, vector subtraction involves the same length of b, but in the opposite direction. So let's take our example here. I had a plus b. My original vector sum was a plus b. But now b in this same example is going to be in the opposite direction, but with the same magnitude. So I can rewrite this as a plus minus b, and I end up with uh, what I'll say is ad as my new uh, vector sum. So ab uh, plus a minus bc is equal to ad. And if I were to subtract, <clears throat> I say a plus a minus uh, b, which is now negative 4, negative 2. Adding these together individually leaves me with negative 2, 1. And then finding the magnitude, negative 2 squared plus 1 squared is equal to the square root of 5. All right, so the commutative property applies to vector addition and subtraction. So I could say a plus b is the same as b plus a. It doesn't matter what order you add the vectors in. Uh, the resultant vector sum is always going to be the same. Well, and this uh, also holds for values which, uh, in which we're taking a negative vector value. All right, so let's talk about uh, vector multiplication. So I can take my same uh, set of vectors a and b. Now I'm going to say 2a plus 2b and I end up with a new vector sum here, which is 2a plus 2b. So you can multiply vectors. Uh, the multiplied vector would be 2, uh, for a would be 2 times a, which would be 2 times 2, comma 2 times 3, or 4, 6, 2 times 4, 2 times 2, which is uh, 8, 4, and then adding those together, 12, 10 is my vector sum, uh, and again, I have a new magnitude, 12 squared plus 10 squared is equal to uh, square root of 244. Now you can simplify this, but I ran out of room. Uh, so I would expect that my classes uh, provide me an answer in simplified form uh, with no perfect squares in the radicand. Okay, uh, I'm going to move on. So vector multiplication and also uh, division, which would just be multiplying the <clears throat> vector by a fraction or a value between 0 and 1, uh, holds true for the distributive property, which means that the k, which is my scalar, or the value that I'm multiplying the vector by, uh, times in parentheses a plus b is the same as ka uh, plus kb, or k scalar plus m scalar times a is equal to uh, ka plus ma, where a is the vector. All right, uh, so let's move on. All right, so you're going to complete uh, some of the problems as classwork. Uh, from the textbook, uh, and I'm going to move on to a problem uh, <clears throat> that re requires uh, application of this content. Okay, so uh, first question is a force of 20 newtons pulls an object due east. Another force of 10 newtons pulls the same object in, in the course of 150 degrees. Draw the resultant forces using vectors. All right, so what we're going to do, <clears throat> a course starts with a positive, so if I draw uh, like a coordinate axis here, <clears throat> the course starts at the positive y portion of my xy axis and moves in a clockwise direction. So I'm going to move 150 degrees, and that's my course or compass heading, in a clockwise direction, 90 degrees, and then 60 degrees, and this is my 10 newton force uh, at 150 degrees to the positive y axis. The 20 newton force pulls the object in a due east direction. Now I had previously told you, if we go back to the prior examples, I previously told you to link the vectors uh, from endpoint to the uh, endpoint here to the tip of the vector and then endpoint to the tip uh, and then again to the tip here. So we're connecting tip to endpoint uh, and in this case however because the vectors are acting on the object, we're going to draw the vectors from the object, but ultimately it doesn't matter because we're going to add these vectors together 
by uh, placing the endpoint on the tip and redrawing to find the vector sum. Uh, but we just want to draw this uh, correctly first with a proper uh, measurements and degrees so we have those angles so we can figure out the value uh, that we want when we're figuring out the uh, resultant forces. So now we've drawn our vectors. We want to use trig to find the magnitude of the resultant vectors. Uh, of course, now I can draw my vector sum, which uh, I can create geometrically by, again, linking the 10 Newton vector with a 20 Newton vector here. So tip to endpoint. Um, so again, part of the confusion between the two examples is uh, in my applications example, which I'm working on here, I start with both endpoints on the object, but ultimately I'm going to draw them uh, from endpoint tip, endpoint to tip, with my vector sum uh, connecting the origin vector to the final added vector tip. All right, so I have 20 newtons here. Uh, I know that the measure of this angle is 120 degrees. So I have 20 newtons here running east, 20 newtons here running east. These two 20 newton vectors are going to be <clears throat> parallel to each other. I know that this angle measure here is 60 degrees. I know with uh, parallel lines, uh, same side interior angles are going to add up to 180 degrees. So this angle here is going to be 120 degrees. Now I can then use the law of cosines to solve for my vector sum. Uh, my vector sum is going to be x. So x squared is equal to uh, 10 squared plus 20 squared minus 2 times 10 times 20 times cosine 120, which is uh, x squared is equal to 700, or x is equal to 26.46. Okay, so uh, now we're going to find the course of the resultant vectors. <clears throat> I know that uh, 26.46 is the magnitude of my resultant vectors, or vector, or the length. <clears throat> so now I want to figure out what the course is, and ultimately what I want is this angle here, but I can use where this... Uh, arrow is pointing to find this angle. Alternate interior angles would be congruent between the two parallel lines. And I can figure out this angle by using the law of sines. Sine 120 over our uh, determined magnitude of the vector sum here in red is equal to sine C uh, uh, over, uh, over 10, which is our 10 Newton value. So we're looking for the value of C angle C. And if you work out the problem, you get uh, angle C is equal to 19.1. So that's how we figure out this problem. Uh, we have the direction of the resultant forces uh, for uh, the uh, angle C here, which is also the same as this alternate interior angle, 19.1 degrees. And then we add 90 degrees to it because we're finding the course of the value. So from the positive y-axis, I have 90 plus 19.1 leaves me with a course of 109.1. All right, that's it for this edition of Otten Math 12.1 uh, Geometric Representation of Vectors. Join us next time when we talk a little bit further uh, about adding and subtracting and multiplying, uh, and also provide a couple more applications examples in the next edition of Otten Math.